Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how to make a variety of hats, such as top hats, magician hats, and they're going to be kind of stylized. They're not really meant to be historically accurate or anything like that. So we're going to use both 3D Builder and Paint 3D. 3D Builder is going to be used to make some of the shapes and use some of the tools, such as hollow and splice, and then those objects will get imported into Paint 3D for the final assembly. Probably could do it all in 3D Builder, but I'm really trying to peg this to the Paint 3D application. It's just that 3D Builder has certain tools that simply are not available in Paint 3D. I'm holding out hope that maybe eventually those tools will make it into Paint 3D as these are both developed by Microsoft. And there's already some interactivity between them or else I wouldn't be able to do this. So let's click on New Scene in 3D Builder. In the Insert menu, click on Sphere. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on Scale, and you're going to grab the arrows at the top, and you're going to squash this down. Left click, hold the mouse to see how squashed it is. That should be fine. Well, maybe a little bit. There we go. Now you could say, well, what's this for if we're making a hat? This is going to be the very top of a hat. So we could be lazy and just use a cylinder and say, okay, that's the hat. But what if you want like a slight indentation at the top of the hat? Or maybe you want it to uh, puff out at the top. Well, you would use this, and that's what we're going to do. So click on Edit. Click on Hollow. And this does exactly what it says. It hollows out the object. You can see there's like a very translucent border. That's the thickness. Blue is what's being carved out. That's the what's going away. Since this is a hat, it's fabric. We really don't want it to be thick. So we'll take this slide and bring it all the way to the left. And now you can see the blue just about totally dominates. Go ahead and click on hollow. You don't see anything yet because it's only been hollowed. We haven't actually broken the surface of the object, which we're going to do now. So on the edit menu, click on split. And you have two choices. You can keep the top or the bottom. Technically, you could keep both, but we don't need both. If you're keeping the top, that's if you want the hat to kind of puff out at the top. If you're keeping the bottom, then how will you keep the hat, uh, like have an indentation at the top? So let's keep the bottom. We'll have a slight indentation. And then we'll click on split. So now, if you left click and rotate, you'll see that there is a slight indentation. Okay, so that's the first object. Let's move that one off to the side. Now we're going to make the main part of the vertical part of the hat. And we're going to use a similar process. This time we're going to insert. We're not going to use cylinder because, again, that's a little bit lazy. We're going to use a cone. And the reason for that is by using a cone, rather than having the sides be parallel, we can have them like point inward slightly, point downward slightly. Again, a little bit more detail makes the difference. So we click on cone, and there's our cone. Now what we're going to do, we are going to click on Edit. You're going to want to make sure only this object is selected because sometimes over here this is sticky select and it'll select multiple objects. You're going to want to make sure you're not making extra changes to that one. So what we're going to do now, we are now going to again do split. And in this case, we're really going to want to take this plane and move it down low because what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to keep only a little bit at the bottom and then scale it back up, and you'll see why. But in short, the sharp angle won't be nearly as sharp when we do that. So grab that plane, left click, and this is not an exact science. It's whatever looks good to you. And then you can, let's do a little bit more. And then up here, you just click split. And again, you also have the choice to keep top or bottom. In this case, we want the bottom. Now what happens, if we scale this up, you'll see that it doesn't maintain this angle. It actually straightens it out. So if we left click, see, now you've got a little bit of angle. So kind of looks like a fez. Uh, you have, maybe we could have kept a little bit more, but you get the idea. The idea it's not just uh, parallel, that you have a little bit more detail now. So let's go ahead. And now hollow this. So you can see we keep using the same tools, hollow and split, hollow and split. So we're going to go ahead and hollow. 
Again, since this is a uh, meant to be cloth, we really don't want a lot of border. I would say that we want a little bit of thickness because we want these to be able to overlap. So we'll give this a tiny bit more thickness. Mm. It's actually too much. All right, we'll just keep it at the minimum because I could see how much that border went in. So we split, uh, we hollow, excuse me. Now we're going to split. So again, we go to split and we're going to split both the top. So split. But now we have a bottom that we want to split off. So again, we click on split. This time we swap and we keep the top. And again, I'm just left clicking on this plane and moving it up and down. Split. Then I'm going to left click and rotate. And you can see that you now have a hollow, not quite a cylinder. Well, I guess you could call it a cylinder, but again, the sides aren't parallel. The whole idea is, again, we're trying to get a little bit more detail to it. All right, and the last thing will be the uh, bottom of the hat, the brim. So let's go to Object. Sorry, let's go to Insert. And I guess in this case, we could just use a cylinder, hollow that out. Actually, let's undo that. And let's move. Sorry. And let's move this off to the side as well. Now we insert cylinder. And in this case, the center is going to be small because we want the brim to be wider. So let's do edit, hollow, and we'll take the slider. Let's do that. And this is kind of just eyeballing it. If you want to do this like professionally for something that you're actually going to release for production, you're probably going to want to line this up because obviously this hollow, if you've taken the time to hollow out the, the, the top of the hat, then this should match. So hollow. And now we're going to split this. So split. We'll keep bottom. And we don't want this to be too thick since it's a brim and split. And actually, because of the thickness, that kind of messes it up. So I undid that. I clicked on undo. Let's try that again. Split, split. There we go. And then split, keep top. There we go. So sorry about that. So be, I was forgetting that because of the hollow, we needed to go higher up because it's hollow in each direction. So the top and the bottom weren't as hollowed out either. So split, and there we go. Now we have the brim of a hat. Now we could just stop there, but let's make this kind of stylized like something you'd see in an anime. So what we could do is we're going to put like a belt and a buckle around the hat as well. So... What we're going to do, and this is really just rinse and repeat, the same kind of things we've already done. What we're going to do, we're going to take the vertical part of the hat. We're going to go to Object. We're going to go Copy, Paste. I'm going to move that over. And what we're going to do with this one, this is going to be the belt that I just mentioned. So we're just going to scale this down. So I don't think we even really need to slice it. We can just scale this. So I clicked on scale and I grabbed the arrows at the top. Let's zoom in, left click and hold to rotate. So that'll be the belt. And then if there's a belt, then there should be a buckle. 
So for that, that's just going to be a cube that's hollow, hollowed out and then split. So insert cube and edit hollow. Now this one, we are going to want some of a border because it's a buckle. So we don't want it to be as thin as the we don't want it to be as thin as the material, but we also don't want it to be that thick. Yeah, a little bit more. And again, this isn't exact. This is just whatever looks right. So I clicked on hollow, and now we need to split this a couple times. So split. Oops. Yep. Sorry. I thought everything was selected for a second. My apologies, but that's fine. So split and we'll keep top, split again, this time keep bottom, and now it's starting to look a little bit like a buckle, and split. Let's move that over, and now we've got our objects for the hat. So it still doesn't look like much of anything, but you can really see how it's going to assemble, though. So that's the vertical part of the hat. That's the top of the indentation. That's the bottom of the brim. This will be the belt, and that will be the uh, buckle on the belt. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to import this into paint, and then we will assemble and paint it there. So to do that, we click on the menu in the upper left corner, choose Save As. And as you can see, I had a previous one here where I was practicing. So we'll just click on that and we'll choose save. Uh, it will be called Top Hat Pieces. And it's a 3MF. We save, gives me the warning. Yes, we want to overwrite it. And then we go over to Paint. So we click on Paint. Click on New. Click on Menu. Insert. There it is, Top Hat Pieces. Open. And now it's just a matter of assembling these. Now, one of the challenges will be lining up like the top of the hat, the very top of the hat with the vertical part, because as we said, we use very thin borders because it's meant to be cloth. So that's one of the things that you want to consider is when you're lining them up, uh, it gives you less margin of error. So let's click on 3D view, right click and rotate. Again, 3D builder is the opposite. It's left click and hold to rotate. And we'll just push these all up against the canvas so they're lined up to begin with. And there's the dot is highlighted, so they should basically be centered. We're also going to scale these all out. A couple of these I'm going to want smaller, particularly the belt but I want these individually to be a bit bigger to begin with. Press down on the scroll wheel to pan around. Let's see if I can paint these all at the same time. So I selected everything, edit color. Yeah, I just chose the gray. Now let's start lining these up. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna slide this over I'm going to slide this up, and this would probably be the hardest one to try to line up. Let's shut off the canvas, or at least make it transparent. So I clicked on Canvas, Transparent Canvas, On, go back to 3D View, and now you just, oops, sorry. There we go. Not sure why it was jumping out of 3D View like that, sorry. And then you just want to line these up. That's pretty close already. Let's push that down. So it looks like it's a tiny bit too big. And also, you're really zoomed up on these things. If you're not going to be that close, then little overlaps won't be noticed. But that looks pretty good. So your top hat... Now it has like an indentation. Like I said, you could have done the opposite. Actually, you could still use this one. You could flip it one, uh, 180 degrees, and then you would have like the, the uh, uh, rather being concave, it would be convex. So let's click on, yeah, again, it's doing that. When I'm clicking on an object that's 
popping me out of 3D view. I'm not sure if it's because of the um, canvas, but we can go ahead and turn that back on because I think that was the hardest one to line up. So go back to 3D view. Yeah, see, it didn't drop me out. So the canvas being shut off, apparently, I'm not sure if that's a bug or what, but you could see how it was jumping out. And th there's nothing really special I'm doing. I'm just clicking, scaling out if necessary by clicking on an edge, moving this around. Now, let's see how that looks. That actually looks pretty close. Maybe this could go... This could go back a little, but now this isn't centered. Okay, so it goes up. Scale that out a little bit more. And that's one thing about scaling. When you grab a corner, it scales in that direction. It doesn't scale in all directions. So you wind up having to recenter your object. So far, so good. That looks pretty good. So we've got those three components in place. Let's go ahead and take this one. Actually, for this one, let's change the color. Edit color, let's make this brown like a belt. And this has to be scaled out slightly because I used exactly the same object and just spliced it. There you go, so kind of like a belt around the top. Click on this, we'll change the color on this. We'll make this like a yellow or goldish color. Bring this over. But this one, I'm gonna rotate, so this tool here is the rotate tool. And we want it to be 90 degrees. Well, we can always tweak it a little bit. So, let's bring that forward. We want it to be on the front. Now, let's move that up vertically. Obviously, it's too big. Let's zoom in. That's just the scroll wheel. Again, to pan around, it's pressing down on the scroll wheel. Just take this corner, take this top, and the buckle is going to be a little bit elongated. I suppose we could move this up slightly. Stretch it back down a little bit. There we go. And again, this is a lot of just minutia, seeing how things are lined up. Top of the hat isn't quite lined up right from what I can see. It looks like this needs to go over a tiny bit. But there we go. So now you have yourself kind of a stylized top hat. And a brief splice there because for some reason it took a couple minutes to save. So in the upper left corner, just click on Menu, choose Save As. And if you want to import this into Unity, choose FBX as the format you want. Because if you do that, once you've saved it, you can just drag and drop it from wherever you saved it into the asset folder of your Unity project. Okay, so that should do it. I hope this was helpful. As I said, next one will probably be like a magician's hat, and that will probably be a much shorter, simpler uh, project.